Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. With a, with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. I will continue to bless the Lord. I can continue to give him praise, honor, and glory for who he is. But most of all, for what, but for who he is, most of all, for who he is, and thankful for what he does. Glory to God. Right where you stand, we're going to have prayer. We're going to go straight into the word. But I want to pray uh, that our minds are gathered, that we not lose our focus. And um, thank God for so many of you being here today. Amen. Pray that you came for God, that you're looking to start your year with purpose, to strive and thrive through this year, not struggle. God desires to take the struggle out. He desires to take the struggle out. But we got to be willing to participate. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you. We thank you. We honor you for this place, this space, and this time that you've given us. God, to honor you through your word, through our response. God, through our submission to all that you've called us to do. We say yes to your will and we say yes to your way, God. We trust you. We thank you for our time together in our leaders training this morning, God. Let that same anointing, that same spirit flow over into this service. We, God, release most holy faith in this atmosphere. Decreeing and declaring that we are one with you and with Holy Spirit. So feel this atmosphere even the more that in all our getting, God, we have understanding. God, take us to a place in you where our reverence is restored, where you have first place. We thank you for a new year, a new season, a new time, and a new opportunity to turn our hearts back to you. So we serve notice on the enemy. You, uh, you've allowed us to arrive once again at a set place, at a set moment to receive a set word. We set our face toward God. We set our feet like hind feet, deserve, determined not to be moved in this season. And we declare victory, victory, victory in every area of our life, even now. In Jesus' name, let every heart say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a hand. Praise amen. Thank you, praise team. Hallelujah. Thank you all. Um, we're working on some things, and then we want to see success in every area of life, not just for ourselves, but for you all. Amen. Can y'all accept success? Amen. If you can receive it, go ahead and lift your hand and say, God, I receive. I receive. In every area, in every area, I need a little bit more. Every area, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hebrews, that's where we're going again. Back to Hebrews. We started there last week, the 12th chapter. Uh, we started a, t a teaching on last week talking about this year. Y'all remember my topic from last week? This year. It's on you. Somebody say it's on me. Not on the church, not on my spouse. What I do this year, wherever I succeed at, it's going to be because of decisions I make. It's going to be because of decisions I make. And I'm going to challenge you today. I'm going back to that same word, but I'm going to challenge you today because some of you will blame others for what you not, what you don't get to or what you don't achieve. And, uh, you are the only one that can be blamed for what you don't do. Y'all quiet already. Your obedience, and let's go ahead and take a note before we read the scripture. Your obedience will, will cause some discomfort this year. Your obedience will cause some people to be mad at you this year. Your obedience will cause, amen, at times a divide or a separation of relationship this year not that you're going to break off people but there's going to be times when you feel like we're just not connecting because I got to run my own race come on and I'm going to deal with that because sometimes in your running it is seen that two that have been assigned together at times it seems like they're running different ways and you got to come to a place where we can come to an agreement because the word of God says, how can two walk together except they be in agreement? Amen. 
Now that we're going to say this, I'm going to get to it. Let's read first. Hallelujah. Uh, Hebrews 12 and 1. And the word of God reads, let's stand for the reading of the word. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Do we have it? Hallelujah. It says, wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Now, if you got an electronic device, this next part of the text, I want you to highlight all of it and put it in bold. It says, and let us run with patience. Give me a little more. Yeah. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We're going to deal more with that. The latter part of that, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. In other words, let his run be our example. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at a rewarded place or the designated place at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest we be wearied and faint, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Then it says very clearly, you have not resisted unto blood. In other words, you haven't given nothing for what you're trying to say. You you haven't caused any conf- you haven't caused any conflict in your re- in, in your resisting. You just go along to get along, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not, thou not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of Him. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. If I may have just a little time today. I want to talk about on the topic of running to win. Last week we said it's on you. Today I want to say we're running to win. I want to subtitle that a winner's mindset. A winner's mindset. Now from my understanding, when I look at life, I don't know too many people that enjoy losing. Any athletes in the house? Y'all just, what happened to my mic? Y'all move the volume? Come on now. Any any athletes or or people that like to play games and uh, what is cards? Spade, pitch and pennants, whatever you like. Anybody enjoy losing? Anybody ever celebrate? Oh, man, I lost. Good God, thank you, Jesus. Because if you're around people that don't mind losing, then they're gonna mess you up if you're a winner. And then some of us are so intense in our winning, we get frustrated when we're around losers. And losers, people that say, well, it ain't, it ain't just, it's, you ever play with somebody that says, it's, only, it's just a game? When I play basketball, somebody says, it's just a game. Like, dude, it's a, it's a game to you. I'm giving my all. A winner's mindset is, 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 is a different way of thinking. When we look at our text and we started here last week, we, we talked about it's on you. And God said, amen, this year, if you're going to succeed all that he's given you to do, amen, you can't blame anyone else for your failures. You can't blame anyone for your shortcomings. Amen. You got to make a decision of quality that I made a commitment to God. And in spite of everyone else I'm connected to, if I'm looking to receive all that I have from him, all that he has promised me, amen, I got to get to a point where I know it's on me. On me, it's on me, meaning sometimes it may seem like you're being selfish, but what you're doing, you've taken accountability for your walk with God. Somebody say, take accountability. In other words, when I fail, I can't blame no one but myself. I can't blame my husband, my wife, my children, significant other, whatever the case may be. The scripture says, run. Run. Run means to live your life in Christ. I'm getting to the good part, y'all. But it then it says with patience. <laughs> and we said last week we got kind of stuck there. We said that patience is an ability or willingness to suppress, to suppress, amen, relentlessness or annoyance. To suppress relentlessness or annoyance when confronted with delay. And many of us have come to the conclusion that when things are delayed, we get more annoyed. We get frustrated, and we have the tendency to try to push the process. 
And in pushing the process, sometimes we get pre, we, we get uh, birth to premature success. And pre, premature success is simply a delayed failure. Because anything that's premature has to be treated with a different type of treatment. They have different attention given to it so that it doesn't die. And we prematurely have, we have premature success. We don't know how to give it the right attention because we didn't wait for the process. So to live our life in Christ, he says, running with patience. Patience is translated as perver- perseverance or endurance. So we got to have endurance in this walk. We got to have endurance. But in this winning, uh, winning this race, in running your race, amen, we're talking about the race meaning the life assignment. My life assignment. Somebody say, I have an assignment on my life. Y'all say it loud. I have an assignment on my life. Too often, we let people dictate how we live in God. We kind of dial back if our obedience irritates someone. We, we kind of, uh, and I said last week, I made reference to it. Deion Sanders said, don't let my confidence intimidate your insecurity. In other words, don't let my dedication to him, amen, frustrate your lack thereof. In, in other words, when I'm trying to move in the way he's called me, I won't let your inconsistency interrupt my dedication. Come on. When I'm obedient, just because it frustrates you, I can't stop being obedient because my lack thereof. Isaiah 119 says what? If we're willing and obedient. If we're willing and obedient. Willing and when Conjunction, junction, what's your function? And it's a conjunction thing. They're connected together. I'm willing, but am I obedient to do what I need to do? Do what I need? We talk about it. In the world, we say you talk a good game. A lot of us talk a good game. But there's some of us in this room today, I can feel it, that even as I'm talking, they got things running through their mind. I say, man, I, I'm getting this thing this year. Everybody around me going to get frustrated, but I'm going to win. I got a winner's mentality. I got a winner's mindset. I got to live this life that is assigned to me. To run with patience the race that is set before you. Somebody say, I got a set race. This has been assigned to me. So it's been assigned to me. We ought to run and, and continue running. Don't stop because it get hard. Don't stop because they get mad at you. Keep running. Keep running. Everybody say keep running. Why are you not paying me no attention? I'm running. Why are you acting funny? I'm running. I see you got tired. Why you got tired so fast? You refuse to run with patience. Patience, is, it, it, we got to deal with this delayed, this late, delayed progression. Because there's some things we're not ready for that we're calling for that we're not ready for. We're not mature enough for some of the things we're asking God for. And since it's not being presented, it's not being manifested, amen, we think something is wrong. God said, no, I'm just trying to prepare you. And so we're giving, we giving birth to premature success. In other words, we're giving birth to things that look successful, but they're not sustainable. In other words, we're making stuff happen. And it's not going to last. Come on. What you should be doing, amen, is working from the inside out. Somebody say, tell yourself the truth. I need some work. <laughs> Let God finish what he's starting in you. Don't t- start jumping on stuff you know you're not ready for yet. And then don't sit back and say, I'm not ready because you're not ready to put in the work. Some folks say, I ain't ready yet. I'm not ready to read scripture. Why? You weren't ready to read scripture last week. Why are you not ready this week? Come on. I'm not ready to start exercise, but I want to get, no, where, where, when are you going to get ready? It's not going to happen unless you prepare yourself. Preparation is essential. I told you in leaders training this morning, preparation is, sen- is essential. To run with patience. I'm getting to the good part, y'all. To run with patience could be very difficult. Come on. To run with patience. Running is not to suggest the absence of challenge to live this life. Speaking in tongue, loving God, doing all those things doesn't mean that there's not going to be an absence of challenge. As much as you are eager to achieve your goal, that's how much more the enemy is, is pressing against you. As long as you look warm, you have on challenge. The devil don't care about you saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. He don't care how many scriptures you learn. He don't care how many visions you write and put little pasties all over the house. And when you start making up your mind to do what you're writing down, this is when the challenge is going to come. Watch this. It is hard to be in a place where one has decided to run 
and others decide to walk. Come on. Why are you acting funny? I'm running. You got to do all that? I got a winner's mindset. See, there's some of you right now. People are already, uh, people are already challenged by your commitment. They're already challenged. But when you start saying, this year I'm winning at all costs. I'm not going to compromise, but I'm winning. I'm going to do what it takes to win. And my mentality this year is going to frustrate everyone around me. You think you may, I made you mad last year. This year you might walk out of my life because I'm determined to win. Y'all good? Somebody say I'm going to win. Doing the same thing, expecting something different is what? I can't hang with crazy folk this year. I'm sorry. You can't be on my team. I can't put you in no position because you quit on you. I know you'll quit on me. If you quit on yourself, if you fail, if you don't give your own stuff priority, how can I trust you with a priority in my life? If you're not doing what it takes for you to make it. Here's the deal. If you, especially if you're in a team concept, look at how the other person take care of their own business. How can you trust them with yours? Y'all good? This is a quiet church. Y'all quiet? Y'all quiet. God said there's going to be strategies put in your life this year. And he told us on last Sunday that strategies were in place. He said that the strategies are those people, amen, who think on ways and tactics to manipulate the battlefield. In other words, give you skill sets in life to help you get past those, those uh, stuck points. Those stuck points, those places where we talk about going forward, but we get stuck. Those places where we know when we get into that stuck point, we can be running with such a momentum that we have the ability to break through, but we recognize it as a stuck point, and as we start approaching these areas, we start to slow down. As we start dealing with things from time past that tripped us up before, when we see these things coming up again, we begin to slow down our momentum, and then we stop running, we begin to walk. And the scripture says to run the race that is set before you. There's no shortcuts in this race. Somebody say there's no shortcuts. All the shortcuts you tried last year, they still didn't work. You had temporary success. By the end of the year, that thing that you was temporarily succeeding in faded away. And we have the audacity to take that same mentality and try to restart it in January. Think it's going to work again. It's not going to work. Y'all still with me? So what is the king, What is the winner's mindset? Write this down. What is the winner's mindset? Hmm. A winning mindset doesn't allow short-sightedness or the short-sightedness of others, to other, the view of others to determine or deter them from being great. Just because you don't see it, that don't mean I can't do it. Just because you never did it before, that don't mean I can't do it now. Just because you failed in it, that don't mean I can't do it. Y'all still here? Because it challenges you, they don't mean that it's going to challenge me. And just because it's challenging, they don't mean that I'm not able to endure the challenge. Because this challenge is going to prepare me. It's going to get me ready. It's going to discipline me. People with a winning mindset have faith in the vision that they write for their life. And they are mentally tough. They're not weak folk. They're not crybabies quitting every time something bad happens. And I'm looking, looking for a reason to quit. Ooh, my, my, my. I'm just talking. So evaluate your mindset or evaluate your vow, the status of your vow that you made to God. Are you willing to walk this thing out to the full? Steps to developing a winning mindset. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Number one, number one. Now, I said it this morning. I don't know if y'all cameras going to be on me this morning, but they, they can hear me. Define your why. Why I do what I do. If I'm just casually going through life, I will never achieve my goals. I'm running the race. I'm laying aside every weight. Anything in my life that's tripping me up, I'm putting it down. So I ask the question, what are you willing to give up to win? Come on. Y'all quiet on me. What are you willing to give up? 
What connections are you willing to, to be temporarily disconnected to that other group get themselves together? Y'all still with me? I know we call to be on the same team, but you ain't ready yet. I got to take your mentality and bench you for this season. For this game, we're coming up on the next game, you're not ready. I can't put you in yet. There are people that's, that's in the game of life with you that are not willing to give the same effort you're giving. And you, if you compromise your mentality for them, you delay your winning. And if I'm determined to get there by February and you got a June mentality, you can't walk with me right now. And if you're going to walk with me, my commitment is going to frustrate your lack thereof. Why you keep talking about it? Because we're going to get it done. I heard what you said. You don't act like you heard what it said. Frustrate your environment. Frustrate your atmosphere. Everything around you has to take on the same mentality that you have. If you're going to walk with me, you're going to walk upright. I heard somebody say, don't talk about it. Oh, y'all know that too. That's good talk. But how many people actually being about it? You can't be afraid to lose connections when you got a winning mindset. Because anybody that want to win and they're with you, they already know you're a winner. Come on, they already know. They can look at your life, tell you've been winning all your life. Some people just want to tag along. They don't want to win. They want your overflow. I only got enough for me in this season. Y'all still with me? So define your why. Here's what you do with your why. List your top three reasons why you want to do this. The top three. What makes you want to do this? What makes you want to succeed this year in every area? What makes you want to graduate early? What makes you want to pursue this degree? What makes you want to, amen, be a part of certain groups? What makes you want to marry this joker or that joker? Y'all stay with me. What makes you want to kick this joker out of the bed? Lock them out of the house. They don't want to win. Hallelujah. Got real slow right there. Number two, make a plan. Define my why, then I make a plan. Make a plan. My plan should include short, medium, and long-term goals, but they should be accompanied by a daily schedule, a daily routine. Don't start your life without a routine. Don't start your life without a plan. If you got a plan, that plan has to come from where? From God. A man hard divides his way, but the Lord directs his step. So what is this telling me? I start my day with communicating with God. When you start doing this, everything around you starts changing. You're going to work different. You're going to approach people different. And then people look at you. They can't frustrate you any longer because I got my daily routine in. I got the right nourishment this morning. So you made some people mad when you were slowful. When you shoot from the hip, you just get in there and figure it out. But now you're going in with a plan. When they throw something at you, it don't interrupt you. You strategize with God. You and Holy Spirit been talking. Now you're going to strategize. They're like, man, I got her mad last week. Now she's not paying me no attention. See, if you saw me last year and I, and I look good to you last year, you're not ready for me this year. Everything in my environment that's slow going to get frustrated. Everybody's hating. They're going to hate some more. Come on, somebody. You got to be able to endure your haters. Because haters, I told you what haters really are. Haters are confused admirers. They want what you have. They want what you got. But they don't want to do what you're willing to do to get there. It requires sacrifice. Daily routines. Then you, number three, set yourself to be accountable. I need somebody to hold me accountable. I'm running my race that is set before me. But sometimes I don't feel like running. I need somebody to get in my face and square your shoulders. Come on. I need somebody that's sensitive enough to see that when I'm drawing back. Hallelujah. Get back on track, Chris. Come on. Lift your head up. <laughs> Why are you over there crying? You crying about the same thing you was crying about last month? Come on. This is what we're not going to do. Man, we got to square our shoulders so to the point that the, get, the devil give you his hardest shot. And you turn around and say, that's it. You hit me like that last year. Same thing took me out. 
Come on. I've been fortified. Come on. I've been in training. I heard this before. I've seen this before. You won't get me again. And watch this. You won't hold my failure against me. I know I missed it. But I got it right now. You can bring it up, but all it's doing is fueling me to go to my next place. The thing you talk about to bring me down is going to give me energy to go to the next place. See, a lot of us can't get past when we miss it. But find someone you know in life that's successful that had never failed. Oh, my God. Make a plan. The plan must be short and long-term goals, medium and long-term goals. Got to be followed by daily routine and schedule. Then you need accountability. And watch this. Once I get a pal- accountability, make another plan. Why, Apostle? I need a plan for when I fail. I'm going to say that slow. I need a plan for when all my other plans fail. I need a plan for when my accountability partner is no longer accountable. I need a plan for when I fail after I get frustrated because God is taking too long. Y'all never felt like that? God, I sowed a seed on it. I prayed about it. I ran around the building three times like the preacher said. The prophet told me this. It still ain't happened. Amen. Then I started helping God, and then the plan failed because no longer God's plan to become my plan. I need a plan for when I fail. I didn't plan on failing. Have you ever, have you ever thought about, amen, I need a plan for if I fail? Y'all doing, that. Y'all doing all the eye stuff today, boy. Ooh, I never thought about it like that. I need a plan for when I fail. Thank you, daughter. A plan B. I don't believe in God. We need no plan B. Oh, yes, you do. You can trust God. God is dependable, but we are not dependable. Some people can say one word, knock you off. Somebody can compliment you the wrong way. And their compliment make you uncomfortable. You start shying back. Not, not, Not this year. Then you just buy a new car. Yeah, I'm getting ready to get another one. You just showing out. No, I'm just showing the blessing of the Lord. I'm telling you, man, when you really get a winner's mindset, people that's pretending to win, you know what I said? People that's pretending they're winning, it frustrates them. My brother was teaching a class. He said he don't take, and it's hard, it's hard conversation. When you're sensitive, when you've been there, he said you don't take advice from broke people when you talk about money. He was talking about money. He said every time you're trying to show somebody something, it's a, it's a, it's a scam. It's, he said scam means still confused about money. And so people always be skeptical about stuff that they're not familiar with. So when we're not familiar with something, we haven't had the right exposure. When you haven't been exposed to the right things, you can only respond to what you've been exposed to. And so when I haven't been exposed to real success or real winning, I think those small victories are the things I'm supposed to celebrate. And all they are are stepping stones to get you to your next level. So once I accomplish a thing, I celebrate that. But I position myself, I posture myself to go to the next place. Come on. Are y'all still here? Then you got to have the right perspective. Everybody's not going to celebrate you. Right perspective. Everybody's not happy for you. Right perspective. Everybody don't want you to win. <laughs> Watch this. Here's something to think about. When you're talking about doing it, check your circle. Check the people that's applauding you say, I don't know what you mean. Yeah, well, when you do this, girl, boy, bro, when you get there. But then check the same people that's when you get it done. Check their clapping or their celebration while you're talking about doing it. Then look to them once you get it done. Hallelujah. Their celebrations get lower. And don't start talking about the blessing of the Lord. Their conversation started to change. You doing too much. You be like, child, you don't know what I went through to get right here. You don't know what I sacrificed to get to this point. 
My stubbornness, I had to give it up. My attitude, I had to let it go. Now, you think it'll shout every time I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me? I'm not going to shout about when I remember when. Come on. If it had not been for the Lord who's on my side, I have a right to celebrate. And if my celebration frustrates you, be frustrated. But you're not going to frustrate me. Winning habits are combined with right mindset. Watch this. Discipline. And then perseverance in every action in your life. When I achieve something, I have the right mindset. When I go for it, I have the right mindset. I don't go for things expecting everybody to celebrate me. Come on. Just because you're in my circle, we're going for the same thing. If we can only celebrate me and we're on the same level, you don't need to be with me. Because I promise you I'm going higher. Come on. You can't celebrate other people who don't expect to be celebrated. Look at somebody and say, your turn coming. Your turn. Celebrate me while I do mine. Oh, your turn coming. Yes, I think the harder you celebrate me, the more God can get you to start positioning you to get yours. Jesus. Jesus. You shout about them, man, I'm going to shout harder as you shout. Come on. When you cross the line, I'm coming. I'm coming to the line. I'm not coming to it. I'm running through it. Because I'm going to run with patience, endurance. There's some stuff that I've got to go through based upon the level of blessing, the level of increase he's putting on my life. And if I don't go through some things, I, know, I won't know how to appreciate it when I get there. And if, I, if, if when I fail, if I stay in my failure mindset, I never be prepared for success. Sorrowful times bring us, it keeps us stuck. Father, we came from you. Be sorrowful, grieve, do all the stuff you're supposed to do, but get up and run the race that's set before you. Here's my final part your race is not just for you. You're running for you, but it's not just for you. Other people are watching your life. You hear me? And if you're not willing to carry your own baton, don't expect nobody to carry it for you. You don't know how heavy this is. I got my own heaviness to carry. I cheer for you, but I can't carry it for you. And just in case I have to carry it for you, you won't know the weight of it once it gets to the winner's circle. You won't be able to celebrate for real. That's why it's requir- there's a requirement, the Bible says, to work out your own salvation. It's not the pastor's responsibility. It's not your spouse's responsibility. It's not mom and daddy's responsibility. We have to do this for ourselves. And then in doing so, that means that we hold ourselves accountable. We know our shortcomings. We know what we struggle at. I truly believe I truly believe that when we give God our best, God gives us his best for our life. There's no there's no other way to explain how this ministry has transitioned the last few years if it had not been for the goodness of the Lord. Come on. My life, our lives, some of us have gone through some things these last few years during the pandemic, some things we had to endure if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. Many of us have lost our mind. And we come through hard times and then we fall back into this lackluster mentality instead of maintaining the momentum of success. Success comes with a momentum. Put that in your nose. It comes to promote us. It comes to push us. And it goes back to where we started this morning. Success comes with a momentum. Everybody can't handle it. I don't want y'all to fool y'all like everybody that's around you celebrating you. Some of y'all have won so many times, you, your people around you, you don't even like you no more. They're just hanging around. <laughs> Every time I turn around, they're doing something. They don't, they don't got something different. They don't celebrate like they used to. Let me tell y'all. I'm going to give y'all an indicator. <laughs> people throw some liminal jokes at you. They say stuff. 
to attack your character, then they accompany with a laugh like it's a joke. Like we got a little joke around here, a joke, we're running with a phrase we use, me and one of my daughters. I said, I like that little shirt you got on. I like the little outfit you got on. Right? I like the little car you drive. Huh? I like your little car. A little car? Why I got to be a little car? Come on. Why I can't just be a car? That's an insult. And somebody like, okay, thank you. No. It might be little to you, but it's big to me. I like your little. You keep your little compliment. I didn't mean them by it. Yes, you did. You hating. We're afraid to tell folks stop hating. But then, then on the other hand, I need you to hate. Because I know I can identify my haters. And my Bible tells me that he prepareth the table before me in the presence of my enemy. He set a place of blessing. He prepares. He set a place of blessing before me so that my enemies, amen, can watch him bless me without their consent. Come on. So we got to get to back to the place and look. It might be little to you, but it's big to me. Come on. I don't care if it, it allowed me to have a full tank for the whole month. I'm celebrating full tank. And I ain't have to ask nobody for help. Y'all better come on here, man. See, when you start thinking about winning mindset and you start calling things down that you think that you deserve, amen, you'll be at the gas station. Somebody say, let me, let me pay for your gas. Yeah. Yeah. Gas is too high. Yeah. I got you, brother. Yes, come on. Y'all better get this. It starts again with reverence. When reverence is restored to our life, we start reverencing God like we're supposed to. We start reverencing the people that God put in our life. We start showing a devotion toward things other than what we want. Then God can help us. Then God will show us how to run this race. It's no longer about us. Come on. We just think about what we want. We start serving others. We keep on doing what we're doing to the best of our ability, not just showing up and going through the motion. Not just going through the job, going through the motion. Waiting to retire and you still got 10 years to go. Come on. What some of y'all do? You act like you, got, you retire next week. You, you working <laughs> like you <laughs> on your way out the door. Work through the door, man. I did that. I, I confess that when I was got ready to retire the military, I think I retired two years early. I still had the uniform on. Had to repent because it was not the right example. All I'm saying is, if I'm going to let, run this race with patience, I got to understand that patience means that I'm going to endure some things. And scripture says what? Let patience. Say what? Have her perfect work. Let. Mean to allow. Mean to give space to patience. Give space to perseverance. And endurance. In other words, allow an opportunity for perseverance and endurance to happen in your life without being frustrated. Without trying to get ahead. Because many of us have added all the ingredients too many times. And it just looked like success to us. But it always falls. Let patience have a what? Perfect work. Perfect mean what? Let it mature us through the process. Let her complete what she's doing in our life without jumping out before it's done. Some of us don't even finish nothing. We get, man, I'm done. Done and still there. Done and starting over again. I'm not getting to number nine in the 10 work uh, test and have to start over again. At the finish line and get tired and quit. Come on, y'all. I remember, I'm getting ready to close. I was in the army. I was stationed in Panama. And um, they was giving out these awards for physical training, physical fitness testing. And uh, we already had, they had this little patch for you. score 295 and above or something like that, 285. And I wanted to go. The max you could get was on a standard, they call it a standard scale, was 300. 
and I wanted to go like 325. I wanted to do extra stuff. So I was taking these supplements. And uh, not no steroids and like this, just supplements. And I was taking them because they enhance your performance. They make you run better, make you do better. And I wasn't drinking water. I said I was drinking enough water because the stuff you mix, you mix it with water. And so what, I got down there and too many push-ups. I was just doing push-ups, man. They got to 65, 70. They say you have 30 seconds left. I just kept pushing. 92 push-ups. Got up, man. Feeling pumped, ready to go. Got ready to do the sit-ups. I still remember to this day, 92 push-ups, 86 sit-ups. Then I got ready to run. And I came around the first mile, and they called out my run, my, my run halfway point. They said, 5.33. I was wide open. I'm just kicking it. I said, man, I'm going to break this level minute thing. I'm going to have to speed it up. And as I turned the corner to go to the finish line, I started seeing these little star things coming. <laughs> I'm like, man, what's going on? Then I heard a boy say, sorry, huh? Is you going to catch up? A little chunky kid passed me. I'm like, where he come from? He was short and stubby. He had big old legs. He don't supposed to run with me. You know, he don't supposed to run. I'm built for running. And then all of a sudden, they was calling out times. It was like 10.37, 10.40. And I said, I got to get there before 11. And then I heard them say 10.48. And they say, no, they were spraying water. I said, so are you dead? I made it through the finish line, but I passed out. And when I passed out, I had a sense enough to know the bushes was to the side of me, so I started running for the side. I fell over in the bushes. Everybody, was, I didn't know they were, what they were laughing at. I don't know they were waking me up. And so they had to take me to the uh, aid station. In order to get there, they carried me on like a gurney thing. They had to pass by my house. <laughs> and my little boy, sitting door and Corey, was in the room playing and saw me go by. I said, Mom and Dad, it hurt <laughs> they carrying dad on a bed. I got there. They did all the little hot IV stuff and all that. They couldn't find a vein. They had to stick it. It had stuck me all in the leg and all this type of stuff. And they sent me home for 72 hours. So my wife don't let me get out of bed. My dumb self, once I finally got my senses together, said, what was my score? Instead of, <laughs> you almost died. You, you totally was dehydrated. I said, what was my score? They said, your score, I think I scored like a 325, 330. And I said, man, I got to do better next, next time. My wife said, boy, if you don't stop. Well, what I'm saying this story, the, the whole, the, the moral of the story is having the right mindset and the right perspective. Why are you doing what you do? What's the purpose of what you're doing? My purpose got, I got so obsessed with my purpose then that I forgot about my family. It became selfish. Y'all follow what I'm saying? It became selfish because when you're, when you're in a winter circle, it ain't just about you. It's about everything connected to you. And so when you're pushing forward, you're, you're determined for the, your whole team can frustrate some of the people on your team, but you don't sacrifice your team. So I'm going to make people frustrated, but I ain't going to kill myself doing it. I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull, I'm going to push, I'm going to push. But I'm going to do it the right way. So what, what race are you running? Are you running to win? Are you running just to be there when they say it's the final time or you coming to the end of something? Are you running to the tape or are you running through the tape? Am I running just so, am I just staying in this walk with God so people don't say nothing to me? Am I staying in this relationship because it's comfortable or it's convenient? What is my ultimate goal? And if you don't have that ultimate thing in you, you just go along to get along. You find yourself frustrated and there is not enough success once you get frustrated. Come on, sweetheart. We're standing Thank you, Jesus. There is not enough success when you're frustrated. So I choose. I hope that you would choose to frustrate everybody around you and make them want to succeed too. You look nice today. You're in a women's circle. Come on down. I just want my wife to pray over the atmosphere real quick to check our mindsets. I know everybody here is saving love God. 
but we want to just believe God that he would shift our mindset this year. Thank you, Lord. That we would frustrate some things in our life and those that are around us so we can win as a team. I don't want to lose nobody. I don't want to leave nobody. Find your team in it, around you in your atmosphere, in your, in your home, and tell them we want to win together. But everybody got to run their leg so this team can run their race. Amen. Come on. Amen. All hearts turn toward the Lord. Father, we just thank you. <laughs> we appreciate you so much. Just to allow us to assemble ourselves physically and virtually just to hear a word for such a time as this to just collect our hearts our minds and our thoughts and make them one with you again we thank you for the consciousness to know the importance of our reverence of who you are and who you will always be to be restored to cause us to remember that making the main thing the main thing always which is about you is the first most important thing that we can do in life we thank you for the messenger but we thank you for the message and we receive this message now individually and collectively we make a choice a quality choice as we stand in honor of who you are to us and in us giving you permission to let your word now have free course in us work in us work through us work all the kinks out God bring clarity bring, bring understanding but most of all bring the necessary order Lord God that we would God take our rightful place naturally, spiritually, emotionally, financially, and socially, that we would be the kingdom conduits that you will work through in this next apostolic move. So we first now repent, Lord God. We repent of everything that we know of and those things that we know not of. And Father, we yield our vessels, praying, Lord God, for the winner's mindset to run this race that is set before us, God, that we continue to strip off everything that works against, Lord God, your intended plan. Now, Father, we pray right now that you will give us a download like never before, Lord God, to know that these kind of settings, these kind of teachings are necessary for this next kingdom move. So, Father, not only give us ears to hear, but give us a heart to receive and a spirit to contain, Lord God, that we be vessels used by you, proven by you, Lord God, that we will produce the kingdom results. So, Father, we pray against every spirit of self-sabotage every religious spirit God every wrong mindset God every spirit of pride self exaltation God selfishness self centered Lord God we break and destroy it right now and we yield our total member to you God we say none of us and all of you God restore to us this day the joy of our salvation and uphold us with your free spirit and whatever you do God don't take your joy away from from us God we pray for the spirit God to run this race God with the right mindset knowing that you are a God that is faithful that what you started you're able to finish God and we're praying for that confidence to finish the work Lord God that as we give our first God in our initial start that we will remain constant God and consistent that we will be diligent <laughs> to finish every quarter, God. So, for, Father, we pray for a supernatural release now for every heart that desires to be a strategist. Lord God, to move strategically from a kingdom orchestration, God. We lift up hands now and we yield. Give us all that we need. 
that we will run this race with the patience to endure until the end God that there be no more distractions, no more delays, no more outside interference, God. No more pushing or pulling out of alignment, God. That we will stay in divine alignment. Father, we pray that you would not only do that, but God, give us insight to see every form of distraction. Even from those that we love and hold near and dear, God. Father, we pray, oh God, we pray for a place, a place of placement in our lives. Father, we pray for God that you give us a, a place of placing God. Where to place him and how to, 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 Lord, as our men of God say, to care but not to carry them to care and not carry it God but we place it in the right place God that we no longer God oh God carry it in a way that we play till we God get delayed so Father we thank you for this word that has now been released and we thank you for every heart that has now received every ear that has received and accept this word right where it finds us and father as we receive it father we thank you for that same spirit that is causing transformation now thank you that you're transforming our mindset that we're not fighting for the wind but we're fighting from the wind God we're fighting from victory not for the victory Father we thank you Lord God for the finished work that we are reminded that we are winners so help us to run this race that is set before us to continue to lay aside every weight and the sin ah, that does so easily beset us always looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. Now Father we just give you praise for what you've done and what you're yet about to do and should there be any heart that don't know you in the pardon of their sin we're praying and believing for salvation to be their portion on today God. Save them deliver them, set them free and make them holy. God for every backslider reclaim them now God bring them back to their orig original intent God God and we're praying God not only for oh God restoration but replenishing and releasing to be the best version of them that you called us to be for such a time as this and we give you praise now for it we give you glory now for it and we give you honor for it and we call it done clap those hands and say in Jesus name we receive amen amen and amen glory to God come on let's do better than that hallelujah come on somebody shout I win glory to God I win even if it look like I'm losing right now I know that I have the victory glory to God hallelujah I dare you to just find one good neighbor and say it may look like I'm losing right now but that's the real indicator that I've already won I just got to go through the process Glory to God. Ain't nothing like, amen, amen, fighting a, fi a fixed fight. As the songwriters say, we don't have to wait till the battle is over. We can shout right now because we know in the end who's going to win. If you already know that you win in the end, come on and give God a hand clap of praise for reminding us it's a mindset. It starts in my mind. If you don't see yourself a winner, amen, you, you're doing it in your own strength. But in him, I am a winner. Nay, in all these things, I'm more than a conqueror. And what is a conqueror? A victim with the victory. A person that was once victimized, but now know that I have the victory over what once victimized me. Somebody say, I'm a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. Glory to God. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. And for every person that made a decision of quality to, today, my prayer, God even touched my heart to send a message to my family group to pray, pray for souls to be saved. For love. We're losing loved ones that never were introduced to Jesus because we took on a loser mindset. 
But when you realize you are the winner, glory to God, because you win, your whole household win. And that's not just the people that live under your roof, but everybody that's connected to you and your name. You claim them a part of the winner's circle. You claim them a part of the victorious, a part of the winning team. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm on the A team, the advancing team. We're not perfect, but we are always given a chance to advance in Christ so we can move in him. Paul said it the best. It's in him that I live, move, and have my being. So when you can't move in a win in yourself, you ought to be able to move in a win in Christ. Glory to God. Come on one more time. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. We want to thank you for tuning in. And those of you that showed up to the house, I want you to be this much more intentional in our next gathering that I'm showing up and I'm not showing up empty. I'm showing up on purpose. I'm showing up with a winner's mindset. My praise is victorious. My worship is victorious. My hand, come on, come on. If you knew the power and the strength that has been deposited in you, glory to God, you know that it's something even about your hand clap. You can shift atmospheres. You can know it's something about your hair, woman of God, that you can catch a hold to some demonic stuff and snatch it up, amen, and give the spirit of God liberty to do what he's come to do. Somebody say, my whole mindset as a winner give me access to function in my kingdom purpose. Glory to God. In other words, I'm an asset and not a liability. I don't come here depending on nobody to assist me because I have the help of the Holy Ghost. As a winner, I have all that I need and I have it in him. He is my helper. He is my strength. He is my God. Don't y'all hear my voice? It wasn't this strong. I had a couple of times I was literally strangling, choking over there. But no, I said, help me, God. He is a present help. Not a later on help, but a present help mean right now. All you got to do is cry out. Peter said, Lord, save me. And he snatched him up. That's a winner's mindset. I might look like I'm in last place right now. But ain't nothing about that second win. Kick in. Y'all ever seen them runners that look like they the last one? I love that movie, Racing Stripes. When the man told him, say, you done gave it all you got. He sent the word by the flies and told him to get in his ear. And tell him. He said, you can come on off the track. You, you did your best. But a winner of mine said, uh-uh. Don't look back. I'm going to leave it all. If I know I haven't given everything my best, I ain't finna come off this track. That's the way we ought to be about, amen, our everyday life. Oh, the day started out wrong. You're going to be a bad day. The devil is like, you caught me off guard. Let me armor myself up. Dress myself in the whole armor of God. You got in some kind of way. I don't know how you got in, but let me check. Let me do an a, 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 a armor check. Let me check my armor. Make sure I got everything on right. That's a winner's mindset. And then tell him, you ain't going to catch me like this tomorrow. You ain't going to catch me like this next Sunday. You won't even catch me like this Wednesday. Glory to God. I'm not going to get mad. I needed this truth. Glory to God. All we got to do is repent and return. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. I pray that you have a, amen, the, the manifestation of a superseding winner's week. That every challenge come before you, you know that you've been recommended by God to run a race as a winner. Glory to God. Your timing might not have been good today, but my timing going to be good tomorrow. Come on. That's the way, that's the way a, a, a person that trains to win with a winner's mindset, they train to get their timing down pat. Me and my husband said, we're going to do better this year. Oh, from last week to this week, we were better this week. <laughs> Amen. And next week it's going to get better. That's the winner's mindset. Always seeing room for improvement, but never quitting. Amen. Is there anybody in the house that want to be prayed for or want to be saved that's not saved? I don't take it for granted. And if everybody say, well, I've been saved, I didn't, you know, acknowledge. If you say, I want to repent and return and get, amen, return to God. He say he's married to the backslider. 
If that's you online, amen, glory to God, put a one in the inbox. If you never confess Jesus as your Savior. And then, then if it's, that's you that, that, that have backslid and say, I want to come back. I want to make sure things get right so I can function in the winner's mindset. Guilt can't sit on me no more. Conv come on. A lot of times, we, we, instead of just repenting and really meaning it, we, we wondering if people know and if they believe. It ain't about a man believing if you, if you know you sorry for what you did wrong to God. You say, I'm sorry. And your real sorry means I'm, I'm sorry and I ain't going to do it no more. But I'm going to keep advancing. That, that God forgive me shouldn't be in the same stuff. That's when it's, it's, you're not sorry. You're just sorry because you're convicted, but you ain't been converted. So we want you to, if that's you, come back. He's married to the backslide. He waited on you. Outstretched arms. Carol, come here. One of our babies came. She said, Granny, I missed you so much. I said, girl, I miss you too. You just growing up. So she's like, mm hmm she said, and you know, I'm going to get my nails done. She said, I dance and I wear this. I said, girl, we got a lot of catching up to do. That's the way God does. He want to hear all about it. It's not that he don't know. He wants you to know he know, but he wants you to know you know too. But you can acknowledge what's been going on. But the main thing is I made it back. to. That's the winner's mindset. I was losing. The enemy had me in a place of thinking I was losing. But now I know I really win. I don't win. I don't not win until I stop, until I quit. And I ain't quit. Ain't no quitting me. That's right, daughter. So we appreciate you. If that's you, somebody's going to reach out to you, those online. But if that's you, we're going to ask that you, as we do our closing prayer today, amen, you come up with your mic, amen, your mask, and amen, we're still practicing safety, amen, our CDC codes and all of those things. want to support people. And I want to say this, amen, no matter what you do, what you go through in your challenges and your health, rest is an important part of it. If never I learned anything, I talked about it, but I literally had to do it. And I, one thing I learned, son, I'm not superwoman. My body is telling me, act your age. And not, not what your mind telling you. I feel like I can do a lot of stuff. But my age said, you ain't. So this week, and I'm still in recovery. And as much as I tried to tell myself, there's some places I wanted to go this week. And I felt like because it was related to church, it would be okay. But the Holy Ghost and my husband said, you're going to sit down and you're going to rest. I'm tired of letting the baby go sit on this recliner. <laughs> but rest, rest. And that's the only reason I believe I stand today. I've uh, got antibodies going through my body, got my meds still going through. I'm good. I ain't contaminated y'all. Y'all say but don't know how to do the right thing and use wisdom in the process of doing it. Amen. So with that being said, if you want special prayer, if that's you want to be saved, that's in the house. Amen. You can come up to the altar and we will be here to service you. But if those of you that have joined in, y'all follow our announcements throughout the week. I know we got quite a few birthdays this month. Amen. Look on there. Make sure you love on the people. I got some quick information, important information I need to get you at right after service. And for those of you that didn't make it to the house this week, make sure you reach out to your tribal leaders to get this information because you're going to need it. Amen. If you're going to stay in the winner's mindset and amen, benefit from the win, being on the winning team, you're going to need this information. Amen. God bless you is our prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we just give you praise and glory for all that has transpired. We thank you for every heart and every mind that has opened up to receive your message father we thank you for the download and for the impact of the contact that it has made with our spirit soul and our body that bring us in divine alignment that you shall see the fruit thereof we bind up any spirit of backlash sabotage or retaliation even toward the messenger we apply the nail scarred blood over his life and we declare that no weapon formed against him shall be able to prosper even our lives we 
we stay under the blood-stained banner of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We stand in victory. We stand in the winner's circle. We run our race as winners. We declare and decree that nay in all these things we are more than conquerors. We are the head and never the tail. We are above only and never beneath. We are the lenders and not the borrowers. We are blessed going out and our coming in. We are blessed in our down sitting and our uprising. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are the winners of Jesus Christ and because he won the victory on Calvary. Hallelujah. We win even on today through his shed blood and we apply the blood that we continue to win that we suffer no loss. Father we thank you for the power of the blood that lets us know on a day to day basis. We've seen too many victories to let defeat have the last word. So we declare victory is our battle cry on today. We are winners in our families, in our marriages, in our finances, in our health, Lord God, in our communities, even on our jobs, oh God. Father, in our kingdom assignment, we win, oh God, and we run this race that's set before us, God. We run it, God, in a greater faith, Lord God, declaring a greater outcome, knowing that because you're for us, you're more than anything against us. So, Father, we pray that you will cover us and keep us is our prayer. Keep us until we come together again. Keep us in the winner's mindset. Keep us in the winner's circle. Keep us in, oh God, in the wind of all all things being made new father that you're pouring out your spirit oh God the freshness of who you are the freshness of your breath that will show up in every situation and we love you for it now God we praise you in advance for it now father until we come together again we just give you thanks and we love on you and love on one another claiming total victory in Jesus name amen and amen everybody in this room clap those hands and give God the praise hallelujah like you believe that you are amen a winner and you serve him with the winner's mindset and look at your neighbor and say God loves you and so do I and ain't a thing you can do about it hallelujah glory to God